Well, hello everybody, welcome to Sonic Talk, episode 760, recording today live on the 14th of June. Uh, it's mighty hot here. I know I always bang on about the weather, but I just want to, for the record, I just want you to see, might be able to pick that up. Yeah, that's the temperature in here with the aircon and the fan, both fans blowing. So if I'm more red-faced than usual, then uh, that's why. But as I often say at the beginning of the show, this isn't a show about to do with the UK weather trends. It's actually to do with music technology. That would be electronic music, recording, uh, live streaming, synthesizers, drum machines, software, and, and in many ways, uh, especially this week, mergers and acquisitions. But we'll get onto that a little bit later. Mm. There's been a lot of movement behind the scenes there, and I'm sure the panel will have many thoughts about that. But before we get there, I just want to re uh, remind you of our Patreon. Why not consider joining us on Patreon for the price of a cup of coffee, a cheap one at that, a month you get access to all our stuff ad-free if it's been posted and monetized to YouTube. You also get the Sonic Talk pre-show and a few other perks besides. But if you go up to the upper level, which is still literally just a couple of cups of coffee, you'll get extra content, uh, there's samples, there's exclusive videos. In fact, we're going to be posting some stuff of the Kodamo mask. There's some extra stuff there. There's also behind-the-scenes footage. Uh, early access, all kinds of stuff. And if you're quick and you get it done before the end of the show, your name will appear in the end credits and stay there for as long as you're subscribing. Once again, we thank all of our Patreon supporters and we welcome your board if you're considering. Back to the show. Yes, back to the show. Uh, there is some more stuff on the go. I'm actually looking at the Roland Ira Compact S1 at the moment. Uh, honestly, I've been trying to finish the review, but it has been super hot in here, and it's quite fiddly. <laughs> and every time I do it, I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I get it wrong, and then I sort of heat up, because I, I don't know, um, like, I, people who perform or people when you're doing sort of brain-intensive tasks, it can heat you up, as I'm finding now, because I'm now on, as it were, because we're live. And it changes your metabolism. Metabolism is going faster. So that heat is already adding up. Anyway, uh, we've got a big panel here, so uh, we should introduce everybody. Uh, we'll start off with Mr. Robin Vincent uh, from Malta Music Tech, uh, YouTuber and gear reviewer and journalist and, uh, well, fresh-faced young fella, by the looks of it. We've now seen all of Robin's face now. His beard is gone. Is it a summer thing? I am. I'm just out of college and, you know, <laughs> open into the new world. It's very exciting out here with all you old gents. You're not <laughs> fooling me. Nice no, try. Not fooling anybody. No, so what you're trying like, to say, it's, it's a midlife crisis then, is it? Is that what you're saying? It's something like that. It's just, it's the chin of truth that has to come out once in a while just to, you know, re reimpose its authority. That's what's Excellent. Important. How, uh, well, speaking of truth, uh, what's, what's going on in your world? What have you been reviewing? What's on the bench? What's coming up? What's just happened? Well, funnily enough, I've got an S1 as well. It's in a, it's in a box over there. I, I'm, I've seemed to have hit a bit of a critical mass with reviews at the moment. I've got a Keylab Essential sitting in front of me here. I've got a, some jammy thing from Apogee sitting there. I've got an SSL desk over there and an audio interface here, which is the first time I've used it in a live stream, which was a little bit exciting before I connected to... <laughs> <laughs> the stream earlier <laughs> well it they works no clue what i was doing yeah it works which is nice and a bunch of modular stuff all kind of happening at once so i'm a very busy boy oh that's my. why there's well, been I'm no gonna, videos uh, this week right i've got you well i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna do the s1 and then uh the the virus in the soma terror which i've got and then right. i'm probably going to take a bit of a break i've got a holiday booked at the beginning of july going to go to croatia i haven't had a holiday for a very long time so it's going to be fun but uh, nice to have you robin uh, always a pleasure and uh, we'll uh, we'll hear more from you in a sec uh, we've also got mr paulie or uh, sorry paulie bow uh, for magical synth Hello. adventure uh, how are you doing and uh, I, I haven't got your jingle i'm afraid but um, paulie's been doing some great it's videos okay. how are you I'm not bad, actually. Um, really happy that my latest video got received so well, because it's all about really obscure um, mid 80s to early 90s soft synths uh, running on the Amiga platform. And um, I got a nice sort of dual audience out of it. I got the retro computing people and the synth people and they're all living together in harmony, which is nice on my comments. There's not been too many flame wars or anything like that so that's bro um but yeah it's been a busy time um i'm currently preparing my live set for my oh. first gig in absolutely years since before covid i think so 
And I am relying on some of the old technology for that live set as well. Um, people might call me absolutely mad, but we're going to see what happens. I'll bring my, my laptop as a backup, but I'm going to run all the old computers and MIDI cables and, and oh, get nice. it going. Old school. Old samplers Excellent. and things like that. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And I'll probably remember why we stopped doing it in the first place <laughs> if something goes wrong you know if the sink falls out of time or something i'll be like oh, yeah there's a reason yeah. we we switch to using daws live and things like that but yeah it should be a laugh it's live music it's the uh it's the excitement of it's it, the jeopardy it? the jeopardy and the excitement i the totally jeopardy agree of live music the jeopardy and excitement uh, oh actually quickly speaking of live music don't forget to check out uh geosynth's uh emom on sat on friday night it's the 16th uh, he's got a new venue. Uh, you can check it all out on the, I'm sure, Wagyu or maybe kindly uh, enough to do the EMOM on there. Uh, we will be doing another one sometime this year. It's just we haven't had much time. But uh, yes, thank you for joining us, Paulie. And also we have Mr. Yard Nevo, who's there in his lovely air conditioned uh, place, which I have to say, Yard, is a big improvement of that uh, from that kind of tiled cavern echo that chamber you were in last time. That was, that was dreadful, <laughs> sonically, if I'm, not, if I'm perfect. Sorry about that. It was fun to be there, though. So I think it yeah. was justified, at least from my perspective. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I would love to be able to. Do, well, I could, I suppose, but it's just get, knowing I've got enough network. The idea with doing the system the way we are, I just need a laptop, a small screen. You know, I could, I could do it as long as I've got the network. But I did try it once remotely, and the network was very sketchy. So I'm glad to see that you've got your network. Anyway, you're back in back in town. Um, are you hard at it? Are you are you are you in front of the desk doing the things that you couldn't do while you were away? Yes, um, yeah, I did a lot while I was away. I was doing kind of editing and stuff for the Nexus uh, expansion I'm working on, and now we're in QA stages. So that that's a really big library of guitars and kind of string instruments and a lot of manipulations and arpeggios and uh, kind of uh, sequencing and stuff so uh, that that's a really big task um, yeah and I'm mixing and producing as normal um, it you know I can do a lot of stuff while I'm away as well with a little keyboard something like that which I always throw in my my laptop bag um, and I make sure that I have everything installed on the laptop so it's kind of compatible. Sure. You know, it's good for most things. Uh, but there's the sound, there's the, the actual mixing and, and all that, which I can only do here. Uh, yeah, so well, I suppose that's the thing. I mean, uh, it would be it would be a terrible uh, state of affairs if actually you found that you could do just as good a job on your headphones on, in the back of a van after all the uh, investment of well i tried you know i tried kind of working on headphones and with uh, nx uh, which you covered uh, at some point when it was released uh, yeah it's kind of it kind of helps after a while but um, i still find that sonically i can get if i know the headphones i can get the the, the tones right but there's something about the balance and the the placement and the effects and the whole kind of composition of the of the mix mm. is something I, I I suppose I can get used to it uh, and I'm gaining more experience because I never worked on headphones because I never had to although I listen I check all you know I listen to everything on the headphones all the time as we all do uh, but mixing through it is something else but with the whole Dolby Atmos and the kind of binaural uh, compatibility, which I have to mm. check all the time, I'm kind of getting more into that. But um, still, there's no yeah. replacement. For... I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, one of the killer apps is going to be, if you can imagine a sort of, uh, for the new Apple Vision Pro, you know, the, 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 the nerd helmet, as they're calling mm -hmm. it, having a... a a replication of the space you normally mix in together with the positional information and a, and a, and a, and a, and a kind of um, some sort of scan of your room audio wise because it does have I think it's got uh, LiDAR audio I mean, or something the, that might be a thing that could work 
Yeah, the annex uh, totally enables that type of uh, of approach. It just needs to be kind of open to the user. At the moment, it's like a player of specific yeah. studios like Abbey Road and Ocean Way and things like that. But it can be sort of tailored to uh, to the user importing their IRs. The thing is that I don't think there will be enough demand for that to, to I wasn't thinking for uh, for Hulsa. I was thinking no. for you <laughs> for you so you can oh, just kind of go me. actually so I'd be like I'm in my studio but I'm not if it, you know as it were um yeah but I feel it you know I don't think that it would be specifically that studio that would sound better right. translated to headphones over like Abbey Road Studio 3 or you know what I mean it will be a learning curve, curve anyway it's not yeah, that it yeah. can really replicate it you have to learn how to to use that yeah Sony okay. kind of information fair enough fair enough well um we're 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 gonna get be getting a top I mean you know we can't avoid the elephant in the room and the elephant in the room is obviously um well, uh, this, isn't it, really? Oh, no, it's not that. <laughs> it's even... <laughs> Moog sold to... Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, it's not a video, is it? I'm not so even sure what it is. It should be a web page, which is... Oh, it's all gone wrong already. It's too hot for this. Anyway, yeah, uh, In Music have bought Moog, uh, or Moog. Oh, I suppose they can call it whatever they like now. They own it. It's really no yeah. big uh, uh, issue. But this has been... Uh, this is a really big... Uh, this is a really big deal. I'm going to, that's the button I'm looking for, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Moogso to win music. Um, this came out, yes. I mean, we were aware of the fact that uh, Moog were looking for a buyer. I mean, we know that yeah. things have gone a bit, sort of, have been a bit more difficult since uh, COVID and since perhaps the Moog one probably cost a lot more R&D and had a few mm. more s sort of uh, uh, obstacles in the way. And now Moog have been looking for a buyer and In Music have bought them. In Music, for those of you who don't know, uh, a privately owned company. They own 17 other uh, music audio production and pro audio and consumer electronics, including Alesis, Akai Professional, of course, uh, and uh, Denon and Denon DJ. Um, obviously, we don't know any d other details uh, in terms of financially what's happened here because uh, um, in music are a privately owned company, so they don't have to publish their their accounts in that sense and say you know they, they don't have to be accountable yeah. to shareholders. So I think and Jack O'Donnell mm. is famously a sort of slightly maverick solo uh, uh, entrepreneur who just basically does what the hell he likes and you know can be seen as quite ruthless you have to in those sort of situations it's an interesting yeah. fit i can't think of many other companies i mean i imagine behringer might have been sniffing around imagine the the, the coop the scoop if they could have picked up it but I, i'd imagine mo would never have sold to behringer but this is actually a really big deal because it's sort of i mean even though this isn't the first time Moog have had to do this because obviously no. they went bankrupt and sold their assets. And it's not like the first. It's it, it's not like it hasn't got precedent. But I'm wondering what it kind of means. You know, does, does, does what does it all mean, Robin? What is it? You wrote you you wrote a story and sent me some alternative photos of what you were going to use <laughs> instead of the rather tame version that you you had. I just figured uh, I'd come to you first because we we bizarrely both took the same picture and sort of tried to Photoshop an in music sign. You much more successfully than I on uh, on the on the, on the poster frame for that story because you wrote one for Gear News, right? Yeah, yeah, true enough. I then asked Photoshop to crash a plane into uh, into the Moog factory, which is quite funny. But it's not funny, really. <laughs> it's it's quite, I don't know, it's very interesting because the reaction has been very broad. There's a lot. Yeah. That I think, generally speaking, the majority of people are going, oh, my God, what is going on? It's, it's quite a shocking um, course of events. I mean, not all of us have got our ear to the ground as to, to what is going on financially with companies. And a company like, like Moog is able to project this this aura of itself uh, where it's this mm. this standalone independent always working for the man employee owned boutique handmade crafted vintage analog all of these sorts of words and phrases get banded around with moog and so it, it holds yeah. this very special place i think for everybody and so to see them then connect up with a company which is largely known for stripping stuff back and selling stuff on and and making its own way with a brand that has nothing to do what it was previously perhaps yeah. is quite is quite worrying quite quite shocking it doesn't mean that anything 
bad or into what is going to happen. Maybe this is the dream thing that Jackie has wanted to have all this time. And this is the, the thing that uh, is going to carry them all forward. I don't know, but I'm starting to see the internet fill up with, with mock-ups of Timberwolves and, and Moe's <laughs> yes. stuck together. <laughs> and, and well, I mean, Mo, Moe Timberwolf would things. be genius. I think they'd actually sell a load of those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would. So what does it mean? I don't know. It, it means it could mean a lot of different things. I don't think we, we're yeah. going to know for a while. But it, it could be immensely positive in terms of, of getting... Uh, access to to good quality perhaps cheaper synthesizers that may be a mm. thing so i don't know let me throw the ball towards somebody else <laughs> yeah uh, well uh, it's interesting isn't it because i mean essentially moog have been doing that you know the grand all, yes. all of which are the sub the sub 37 the subsequent 37 matriarch the yeah. grandmother great really good instruments and start and, mm. and starting to kind of reduce the cost of discrete componentry but while retaining a certain amount of the essence i mean i'm guessing people who own the originals would probably argue against that fact but uh, yeah it's an interesting uh, maybe yeah. it'll just take them in that direction they were going in anyway already it seems like maybe it's a good fit yeah it could be there's two there's two things that i thought of initially one if we look at innovation um when elisis was sold they had some quite cool stuff going on, like the, the Fusion workstation I've got behind me, which had multiple engines. And it was like when when they were sold off, a bit of that innov innovation from Alesis kind of died a little bit. And it was more, they rebadged the, um, the Micron as the Mini AK and things like that. So potentially some people might be worried that this means that it will, it will cause some problems for Moog's innovation. Do you understand if we look at past events? I don't necessarily mm. think that's the case because I think Moog has a very strong direction and I think people expect certain things from Moog. But the other thing is, the thing that really interests me is not really actually to do with synths at all. It's more to do with Moog as a company because there's been quite... There's been challenges at Moog for some time now when you've kind of looked at articles on Moog, there's been like allegations of things like misogyny. There's been um, a union started up by Moog employees to do with, yeah. with other allegations to do with fair pay and things like that. And then of course you've got the threat of other companies cloning Moog's designs. And I'm wondering if they just thought, actually this is a bit too much of a storm for us to weather with these three different things going on. Um, and essentially, potentially selling it to someone else might kind of take the, the pressure off the people who were like at the forefront of Moog. Does that make sense? Well, maybe, it oh. may be. I mean, I, I think, I mean, I think in terms of design in, innovation, I would argue that yeah. most of that energy, I mean, a lot of that energy went into the Moog one, which as we know was a, a, a difficult, uh, a difficult birth, shall we say, uh, yes. and and I don't think delivered quite perhaps what the initial vision was. I mean, I know a lot of people swear by them. Ty loves his, other people love theirs. I'm not saying it's a bad instrument, yeah. but perhaps, but it, it, it was never a, really a kind of po a, a new memory mode, which is kind of what people were hoping for. And I think the maybe the innovation has gone into, because they're still using a lot of their old original designs, and I'm not sure... <laughs> That some of those original RA Moog designs from like you know way back the uh, the, the the five U stuff you know the original uh, um, big systems is actually still in 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 any form of copyright. I mean I don't think Moog necessarily own it. I mean they have probably the biggest installed <laughs> amount of uh, skills in how to implement those things. But they, I don't know that they are exclusively theirs anymore. So I think maybe that innovation has sure. changed a little bit. I should also point out that the company is was forty nine percent. Uh, employee owned it no longer yes. is they all got paid off and i don't know whether or not they got a vote oh, okay. on it in the buyout or whether but but they all got paid um whatever it was you know i, I don't know We've, nothing's come to light on there i'm sure they probably all had to sign nda so that nobody could work out what was going on i know yeah it's i mean do you think these um, sort of, sorry oh. it's probably important to say that all of these things were just rumored on the periphery of things you know on mm. social media on websites and stuff like that so they could actually be be fine, but I just thought it was an interesting, you know, thing. All of this little 
little rumours and things happen and then suddenly they get sold. Just kind of interesting. Yeah, it's true. I know, yeah, I mean, these things happen. I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're it's late stage capitalism. All of these things just sort of tend to, that, that's really the way it goes. I mean, it's, you know, and this, maybe this need just sort of fit everybody. I mean, do you think that, I, I suspect personally that there will be still be flagship Moog stuff, but we'll see, you know, one thing that in music have is a massive international distribution network. They can bring Moog to, to more people. So they'll require products that are more affordable. They will source perhaps more, um, more pro, you know, more components at a more affordable price. I don't know. What what do you think is going to happen? Um, I think that if you look at a brand which is probably like seventy years old, and at, at this day and age, it's really difficult to maintain and to keep. You know, I know from a lot of uh, kind of guitar brands uh, throughout the years, and uh, two good examples are Fender and Gibson, both were acquired and this but they ma they managed to to maintain their line uh like you said um by for fender like selling uh, squire uh, guitars mm. so they can kind of approach different um levels of of the market while still maintaining the the brand name but i think that just to to keep a struggling private company uh, which may or may not be able to sustain itself for in ten or five years, maybe the right thing to do is to to have a kind of more modern and current business approach and uh, to just go with the market and therefore maintaining the brain the brand which otherwise may just get lost and kind of uh, yeah. you know naturally fade out so I, I i'm not i don't think it's a necessary i don't know the ins and outs and uh, the employees and and what's going on but as um someone who you know cares about about moog and the whole legacy and the instruments i think it would be nice to see it kind of uh, more democratized uh with uh, lower prices so it's more accessible and it and it remains a, a kind of a household name in the in the synth mm. world rather than just uh, disappearing uh, if if it's it's one against the other um, yeah i think that, that's a fair point yeah i think uh, steve dunnington who uh, has been with the company for a really long time he's one of the design uh, one of the engineers there he's actually uh, mm. as far as i gather anyway he's heading up the product development so there will be product development i mean it's inevitable we'll see some things may be getting more affordable because, I mean, stuff like the Mavis, the Subharmonica and the Mother 32, with the sort of scale that uh, in music can, can muscle in, will probably be mm -hmm. more affordable. I mean, it may be that, you know, they want to keep things like the Model D reissue, reissue at a premium price yes. because, you know, that's, that's a thing, isn't it? I mean, but, you know, that's not for everybody. So maybe they're just going to have a broader range of products. Did I hear you want to come in there, Robin? Sorry. Yeah, uh, I, yes. Um... What was I going to say? It, it's, I mean, there's an element of sadness, I think, involved in it, in as much as mm. we like the romantic idea that a small company can be successful in this marketplace. And in some ways, what this, something that, that this says, the same as, as with Behringer, really, is that uh, to be successful in a larger scale, you have to be a certain type of business person. You have to have a certain type of company. And that doesn't really resonate very well, I don't think, in an artistic community. And we would much rather have uh, the Dave Smiths and the Bob Moogs, you know, fiddling around making nice, beautiful pieces of work that we invest in and aspire to get to rather than feeling that we're buying something made in 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 china yeah yes quite yeah that's stamped out and everybody has one but you know but all of this is an illusion i mean moog haven't necessarily been operating like that for a long time and there's mm. like, like i say they have this aura about them that's yeah. that's projected it's not really there but there's something we are going i feel we're going to lose something of our of our perspective perhaps um, mm. So it's going just forward into, into it's conceptual shit. Yeah, exactly. In 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 how that works. Sure. But also, I think there's a lot of products that they perhaps didn't do that perhaps maybe now they will. I mean, they could do so much more with the Mother Thirty Two line. That format, which Behringer has done a lot of stuff into a very similar idea. They, I've always 
wondered why they haven't done um, you know Mogafogas in that shape, you know, in, an effects yes. unit or just a different sort of synthesizer, or to take a lot of those bits into Eurorack. You know, there's plenty of areas that they they could have gone down, uh, which they either haven't been able to or haven't had the imagination to do so and maybe a shake up with uh, another marketing team and people with cool and young and groovy ideas might uh well that's, that's yeah true. who knows yeah. might bolster it along well here's a thought I'd like a hardware um animoog that'd be good that's a th Those yeah. well i mean they, the they have a app yeah put that They've in got... hardware please with an oscilloscope <laughs> that's right yeah that well that doesn't sound true. well here's another thought this is just a, purely my own conjecture so while Moog were an independent and small fish compared to, say, the behemoth of Behringer, Behringer could do what they liked. But notice they didn't clone yeah. uh, Korg stuff or Yamaha stuff, <laughs> things which have large legal departments, you know, and, and can kick back. Mm. I think maybe, you know, there is another possibility here that basically what's going to happen, and, and it's, this did happen at the very beginning when Moog kind of reformed and Mike Adams was head of the company. They were very litigious. And they went after people who were sort of yeah. stealing their product area. And I wonder whether I whether now now we've got this that Mr. O'Donnell will just go, right, okay, you've had your fun, Mr. Berenger. Here's a few writs and a few legal uh, challenges to your uh, to your stuff to think about for a while and that may return you know there may be you know that some people buy ip so they're buying ip with this maybe some of this ip he can see that there's a legal pathway and he can he could actually recoup a, a large percentage a small percentage or all and more of what he paid for moog by going after companies such as Behringer and other companies that have, as he feels and can legally prove, impinged upon their copyrights and whatnot. Right. So maybe that, I mean, that might be a factor, which I think mm. would be quite an interesting, so I mean, it would certainly be fun watching from the sidelines. I don't know whether it would be a good thing or a bad thing, but I just think it might be quite an interesting uh, concept. Anyway. Um, but yeah. if, you, if you've got thought, Jack and... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So if you got Jack and Uli in the room in the same room together for a fight, would you know which was which? <laughs> that would be my. I don't. <laughs> Good question. Right. Well, I think at this point I should probably run a little uh, a message from our friends uh, over at Isotope. Uh, the Summer of Sound. That's right. We still got the sound. Um, this runs till July the sixth. This is the Summer of Sound special offer with up to fifty percent or more off all software uh, off. Uh, Plugin Alliance and Native Instruments, Isotope stuff. The sale ends on July the 6th. It's valid until July the 6th, 2023, uh, in all of the shops of Native, Isotope, and Plugin Alliance shop as well, at participating retailers worldwide. And don't forget, you can also save an additional 10% on that, on any of those deals with Isotope, at least by going to isotope.com forward slash Sonic Talk and entering the code SONIC10 to save an additional 10%. Uh, once again, we thank them very much for their support. As always, most welcome. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this, I think this topic warrants, uh, uh, has warranted a good area of discussion because, I mean, I think as we oh. see all of these moves, and this happens from time to time, I mean, um, Isotope, for instance, you know, are now part of a larger organisation with Native Instruments, yeah. with a, and, and that seems to fit. There doesn't seem to have been any kind of outrage or, or discussion about how uh, the intrinsic kind of isotopeness of isotope might have changed. I mean, it, it, it's a very interesting. <laughs> People feel that they've got this sort of, it's the boutique vibe, isn't it? That's the thing that really kind of yeah. seems to be, people are very protective over, yes. I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, right. Well, uh, shall we, uh, let, let's move it away from this and go into uh, uh, something lighter and more product based just for a change. <laughs> <laughs> because we have some other heavy, heavy subjects to deal with. So let's take a look at this one. This is uh, Orchestral Tools, Children's Toy Orchestra. Uh, from It's called Abacus. Music is uh, play. Anyone Richard Harvey is an English composer. Technology is just like a kid with a train set. He's got a hundred plus of these things that they've sampled. And the rule book, and just throw them as high in the air as you possibly can, and then just have fun. That's 
that's the way to do a trailer. That sort of makes me think, ooh, ooh, ooh. Although I'm not scoring any Tim Burton movies uh, uh, that I can think no. of at the moment, which I think would be, the, this would be the perfect pocket for this. In fact, it's interesting, later in the, later in the, uh, in the trailer, they're talking about, you know, this could be sort of gothic horror. They're all sort of descriptors of the kind of movies he makes, but others. But just using that kind of language yeah. and uh, appealing to specifically media composers. I mean, uh, Richard Harvey has been going around for a long time. His collection goes from the 19th century to the 1980s. Uh, it's available now, uh, 139 euros or 189 euros uh, until June the 21st. But this is kind of fun. I mean, uh, Yoad, you're, you're, you're in the business of making sound libraries. I mean, I thought it sounded lovely. And I, I hope, I, in my mind, mm -hmm. I want him to all recorded them all in that I don't know if that's a building at the bottom of his garden, but it looks awesome. Some sort of Victorian sweatshop that uh, used to used to they used to make children work, which might actually be quite apt in a way that this is called a children's <laughs> toy thing. Maybe they were all the left bike. there by slave children dark. or something, you know, from the nineteen wow. the eighteen nineties. <laughs> Sorry, that's a, that is a dark thought. Um, but this looks yeah. like fun, right? It did, it, yeah. I mean. Um, I was looking at his collection, and I, I have to say that I have about eighty percent of of very very similar things, uh -huh. except for, for some of those toy pianos. Um, and I have more because I have a lot of string instruments, kind of weird mandolins and um, and and bouzoukis and and things like that. Um, so, and I use them a lot because uh, not all of them all the time in the same way that I don't use all the synths all the time, time but it's, it's nice to have and it's part of the kind of playground vibe that you've been to to the studio I don't know if you remember but I have yeah a lot of a lot of those kind of toy instruments as well as percussion -y stuff and xylophones and 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 all those things and some wind uh, instruments and and i do use them because um it, it it just sometimes it's just more of a classical sort of uh you a uh, classic sort of use for that if you need uh, like uh, whatever to play organically but a lot of the times it's about sampling them and uh and or recording overdubbing more phrases than you know, just single hits. But in a track, if you get something, and you know, a lot of the times it's it's me just stepping into, because I press record here, I can control it from there, but it's just, I press record here and I go in and close the door and fiddle and find some stuff. And sometimes from that noise, there's a nice loop something and a nice so. kind of weird groove just in that. And you know, so all these things kind of, the, the more stuff you have, the more chances you have to come across something accidentally and, and just getting a vibe, wh uh, which you can't achieve by sitting in front of the, of, of the computer. I mean, that's the whole idea of all these sample libraries is to bring that kind of experience to the user, but it's, it's never the same because if you, if you grab whatever, a tambourine or something, there are so many things to do with it. And also close miking is very, very effective, especially for toy instruments. You know, you get something like a rubber band and, and, and pluck it. And but if you're really, really close to the mic, it, I, it I actually yeah, did uh, like a kind of a double bass preset for, for one of my expansion for, for Nexus. You, there's this kind of board game with the rubber, you know, where you have to, and it sounded great. And I just recorded it to my phone and then I messed with it and, and created a, a, something that sounds like, um, like a double bass, you know. So all these things, yeah. the more you have, the more... You know, it's just fun. It sounds like a lot it's, of fun. I'd, ima I'd imagine it's quite challenging with because of listening to a lot of that stuff. There's lots of very tinkly things with lots of really vicious transients that uh, that would be quite you know that's challenging why to the record. Recording, that's why the recording is so important. How, what mics you use, where you, uh, you know, the the miking basically, uh, where you place the the instrument in the room. There are also ways of recording in stereo or uh, also in ambisonics which i also do yeah. um so it's the placement of each 
kind of musician, even if you do it yourself, you can move around in the room for each instrument so you get the kind of spatial information or sort of context. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot, a lot about that, which is which is great. You just, uh, I usually just let the track play, whatever track it is. I don't, not on every track, of course. If it kind of, if I feel like it needs something more organic, and I just go in and play a few things, and you know, dig up for, for up some interesting what, yeah. loops yeah. and uh, or that one shots and pick them down and things like that. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, Paulie, I mean, I'm guessing, yeah. imagine some of those in uh, those high transient, uh, super tinkly things in some of your like really old samplers and uh, tiny sure. little uh, ROM players. That would be kind of fun. The crust. <laughs> <laughs> definitely would. The crust. It's all about the crust. Um, definitely. I also, um, as Joe Ed was saying, love to pitch stuff down. And sometime, sometimes with these high transient sounds, I like to record it to tape or record it to an old VHS deck I've got, which doesn't have S, even has SVHS, so it's quite lo-fi and noisy, and then put that down an octave, you get some great tones, because those transients become more textural, you know, they don't become mm. like a, a sharp note, they become more of like a textural vibe. So yeah, I think, you know, this is great. I think to have a um, uh, either, a bunch of sounds you can just drop straight into a score if you are doing, you know, something like a, a gothic horror film. But also there's probably a lot of mangling potential if you can then export those sounds into something that can, you know, really mess it's with them. It's quite challenging as well, isn't it? Because as soon as you yeah. add things with that kind of level of high end, there's usually such yeah. a wide gap between your stuff yes. and that stuff. I mean, that was the one thing about that, that little demo score. I mean, that was made from all tinkly things, which I think is quite yes. hard to do and quite brave mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of ways. Maybe Definitely. that's why um, uh, it's, a sort of, it's the Danny Elfman approach, isn't it, I suppose? He just sort of goes along with that and obviously uses lots of, lots of those sort of things. I know it's interesting, though, isn't it, Robert? I mean, uh, you know, you probably have to write countless, uh, uh, countless stories about uh, fairly average sample libraries that have been released all over the place. Have you seen any of the other or orchestral st tool stuff? I did one... I reviewed one of the ones, mm. uh, I can't remember what it was, it was Drones, and that was really, I really enjoyed that, that sounded fantastic, mm. and I'm guessing this is going to be of similar quality. Yeah, well, well funnily enough, we don't actually, uh, we, as I say, on Gear News, we don't tend to do sample um, content, because no one clicks on it, oddly. It's not a it's not a winner as far as getting eyeballs on the page, we, don't, we just kind of just tend to ignore <laughs> ignore it however oh. i've never seen the the sign player before is it is it interesting is it different to because everything is mostly contact is it does it deviate yeah, it's from that own, kind of vibe it's the, it's their own uh, sound engine i mean a lot of these things were built out of two necessities aren't there one the contact uh, uh, licensing was always kind of a fairly hefty chunk of what you have to charge for any sa um, sample library if it was standalone. And also, it maybe didn't do things that you wanted to do or did way too much and had a bigger footprint. I don't know what their choice was, but I know they've been working on it for a while. And uh, I mean, it sounded pretty good from what I can remember from the drones um, uh, library I did. I mean, but. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. That has a specific sound, and I guess the interface is designed on a per you know per product basis hmm. yeah interesting uh, they yeah. do a lot of by looks of things some free uh, sort of a subscription service where you get free instruments which is rather rather nice i'm just trying to see if there's <laughs> anything there so, yeah, go, go it on, looks sorry. like it's got good articulation around robin management so that's good for when you're doing anything or orchestral you know you really want yeah, to I'm not sure how much expression in. you get in a xylophone or a glock and you know a, a toy, well, you toy can, piano. I, mean, I suppose you some. Yeah, I suppose you, you, can, suppose if you can. Yeah, if you sample it very, like if you do deep sampling and it really, it's like meditation because you have to really be very, very controlled. And uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, I did the Skype uh, sound theme, so everything you hear on Skype like the the ringtone and the the call uh, kind of noises and all that i did that for for microsoft in 2017 it's still the oh, do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. that's and, you uh, 
Yeah, and What's the one that went dum dum and dum, dum warp warp. <laughs> yeah, that will be the old one. I did I did the uh, the version dum, dum, the current dum. version. Oh the new right. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I just went in the room with a drumstick and I hit a lot of stuff, kind of guitar, mic stands, the window, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. And that's kind of the basis of this whole oh, that that. sound yeah. theme. You know, you know you're Easiest associated million quid I ever earned. Something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something really electronic and things like that. I mean, obviously, there's, there's more stuff in there, but the, the, the kind of, because I wanted to get the, the disconnect and all those clicky stuff, Mm. You know, they're based on actual organic hits. Mm. So there's something yes. to it which gives it more depth than just kind of clicky digital stuff. Uncle, so, what do you use to what do you use to record stuff like that? If you're going in a room and just sort of da I use a, a, a nice omni, grab, would you have a close up? Um, I I have a you know um, either an omni like an Earthworks. Um, Omni, which I love, because there's something about the sound of the Omni configuration, which is transparent, because that's just how the mic naturally is. Um, but, it, you know, <laughs> I usually just grab the mic with a long enough lead, so we won't get in the way. <laughs> and I just go and, you know, th that's the ultimate control over what you're recording, because you have the mic, it, it could be some bulky stuff like the Aston or something like that. It depends on, on the transient kind of that, that you, you want, uh, transient response. But you just, it's like playing an instrument because the mic is part of... Ah, I see what you mean. Yeah. How you produce the sound. The so if you, you know, it, yeah. it's, yeah, um, a lot of fun. Interesting. Oh, I didn't know you were responsible for Skype. I imagine that equally you get equally kind of uh, kudos and also cursing, depending on uh, how, how many people use Skype and how often they have to listen to those sounds. But uh, well done. Good gig to get, yeah. I imagine. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun to it was fun to make, and I have so many different versions which sound, you know, you would rec you know, the, it's a Skype theme, but they're different. Yeah. Um, obviously, I can't release them because no. they're owned by Microsoft. But uh, it, you can't it's do a Skype to deep cut album. To... A Sorry, Skype yeah, what cut. it could have, <laughs> what it could have been. Yeah, nice, oh, nice. You're on vinyl, uh, excellent. Well, uh, but while I've said, well, uh, this feels like a good break to, uh, uh, to to bring in a message from our friends over at Baby Audio, which of course they've released the BA1, which they describe as a modern reanimation of the cultish 1982 analog, which is obviously the CSO1. Um, it brings pure, authentic te textures that are fast to program and dripping in colour. They also say that they've not just recreated but enhanced and moved the design forward with the poly polyphony and a second analogue model oscillator, FM, and the ability to drain the battery to give it that power sag sound. Uh, pricing availability, uh, it's available now at 99 bucks, and if you want to save 15% on that, uh, go to use the code ST2023. So use the code ST2023 over at Baby Audio, and you can save 15% on pretty much all of their stuff so uh so go to it and once again we thank them very much for their support um okay right uh right well we're sort of back on to um stuff that, that that kind of maybe isn't intrinsically about uh what we do but it's really surrounding it so this one is quite i think this one's pretty big as well this is the uh this is basically reddit thousands of reddit communities go dark in protest of uh the company's uh, new controversial policy and it, it's a really interesting one this I mean it's they could be seen as the big bag post but just for a little bit of a, a kind of um, a backstory reddit uh, for those of you who don't use it it's like a kind of it's just like a huge forum bulletin board with a subreddit is something that you might have on a very specific phone I use it a lot in fact I would often use it in place and I know Charles uh, Chicky um, he 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 uh, piped up and said well he often uses it more than Google you just go there and you can usually it's like I'm finding a problem with this piece of software in this really obscure configuration has anyone got an issue and there's usually either a complete sort of forum on the that very subject yeah. and a willing and helpful people and it's a brilliant resource, absolutely brilliant resource. And it's not, it's not algorithmic as far as I can tell. But what's happened is 
the people who own uh, Reddit, you know, they, they have APIs which allow third-party apps to sort of come in and filter that stuff and present it in perhaps better ways than they already do. And they've just sort of sure. drawn a line and said, we need to charge now for the API. And there's one application called Apollo, which a lot of people use to, to filter Reddit stuff. And, uh, and they were going to charge them $20 million a year to basically access the data and then rather jokingly say well if you can't afford that you could always buy reddit for 10 million so again this is this sort of thing where we feel we all own the data that we're using but suddenly we don't because now other people want to charge for it. this isn't the end user obviously yes. but what's happened is thousands and thousands of the major redditors uh, uh, like you know reddit music you have sort of music and then under music you might have heavy metal scar whatever an entire music or entire you know huge the, the main reddit channels have just shut themselves off so they've gone dark basically which has caused a big yeah. uproar it's a big protest and it's it's a really interesting dynamic about how you know because we expect everything to be free because we've been trained that way with uh, a but you know they're usually you are a product of, if something is free i don't know how reddit make their money i think they sell advertising and stuff but obviously you know it's, it's hard to do this stuff. but i just thought it was quite interesting i mean a do you use reddit um and and what do you think about this i mean what do, what does it mean for us robin um I don't know, you're a journalist, you know, I, I, you probably use Reddit like, much like I do, it's good for research. Sometimes you can find, source stories that haven't made it to the mainstream media yet, and it means that you can amplify them and, and whatnot. And this, but it, it raises an awful lot of kind of difficult to answer questions, I believe, really. It, it does. I think what's different about Reddit, perhaps, is that they lean very heavily on to volunteer moderators. So it's not like Twitter, where they have a staff that they can hire and fire uh, on a whim. Uh, most of it is held together because of enthusiastic people who believe in the platform, not because they're they're being paid or they're you know. It's just their place. It's their social online world, and so to suddenly then swap around and say, oh, we're going to just charge people a load of money to access this thing that you do for free uh, for our benefit seems strange, seems, you know, out of, uh, out of whack with the, the, the nature of the place. I mean, of course, all these places have to make money in some fashion. So there has to be a way yes. to make that happen, I, I suppose. But this seems, this seems as though they will be cutting off their nose to spite their face, ultimately, because they need that community to make it run. Otherwise, it's not doing anything. But as far as using it, I find it or have found it a very scary place. Often, <laughs> it's very intimidating because it is. It feels like going back 20 yeah. years, 30 years in, in Internet terms. Um, but at the same time, you find extraordinary things there. It always it's always a place that I dip into if I'm trying to take, uh, you know, troubleshoot something. Absolutely. Always. It's a very, very useful place. So, yeah, well, there's a bunch of words thrown in that direction. Yeah. Is that helpful? It's interesting, isn't it, Paulie? I mean, I know that a, a lot of yeah, a lot of your sort of early internet life uh, and incarnations. Yeah. You know, you're known for your participation in many of these kind of public forums and and helping people sure. out and posting information. I mean, I find I use Reddit for some of the obscure workflow things that we do here, and then. I also try and give stuff back and I think I mean I wouldn't mind paying yes. like I know two bucks a month or something just to keep it going if they just said that sure. then surely that would solve a lot of problems um, I mean because it's not I, the end user again that is being affected here but no. it's the moderators and the admin and stuff I'm actually actually really recent to reddit um, and because um, I've obviously been on dedicated forums most of my life Harmony Central back in the day was the place to be <laughs> to chat on keys, synths, and samplers. Um, Wilson and Chan. <laughs> and then um, there was also, of course, Gear Space as well. So I was quite new to Reddit, but I found it was a kind of new, good place to promote some of the videos I was doing and also kind of answer questions that people might have, you know, on various bits and pieces. And I only really noticed this the other day that several of my communities had disappeared off the face of the earth. So I was like, what's gone on here then, you know, because they're like literally not there. Or you go to it and it says you can only um, you can only access this if you are some kind of special member, which involves private messaging the owner of the subreddit, apparently. And I don't have time to do that at the moment. So Reddit's kind of uh, disappeared for me at the moment. Um, mm. And as far as the app stuff go, it just seems sometimes that 
that these communities get to a kind of place of homeostasis of things just ticking over and then some kind of business decision kind of uproots it you know um so yeah it remains well, I suppose to be they, seen they, they... some of them some of them have said they'll they'll stay off indefinitely um closing down. until until reddit you know um waving their fists until um reddit change their minds so or we'll don't. see what happens yeah. or don't it's yeah. it it's interesting though, isn't it? I mean, it's because, I mean, a lot of places now move on to Discord, which are sort of much more kind of privately things, which, I mean, for our world, uh, Yoad, you know, we, we have an, a, a need for power, a no, not power, but knowledge, you know, quite often it's like mm -hmm. I'm fiddling around with some MIDI stuff and I go, oh, I've never come across with this before, and you can post it somewhere, and because of the vibrancy and the size of the community, someone might get back to you in like a minute or two and say, oh yeah, you need to do this, or you can find a solution. These things are invaluable, and I think, you know, we've got to try and somehow make it work i think um yeah although i have to say that my main instrument for information uh, and fun as well is is youtube and uh, i i i'm not trying to promote google in any way but i think that the most beneficial um subscription i have is the youtube uh, prime or whatever it's called because there's there are no ads and i can um listen to stuff and and um you know shut off the the screen so i can have the phone in my pocket listening to lectures and or music or whatever and um usually i mean i'm i'm i'm, I'm quite lucky because i'm surrounded by even bigger nerds than myself so <laughs> I can uh, I can ask for for support in 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 stuff like um, programming or heavy sort of IT stuff. Uh, so, I, but a lot of times you can just find stuff on on YouTube. Um, and with regards to giving back, um, I have tons of videos on YouTube. Some of them are really old, and people still kind of are thanking me for that and saying this stuff shouldn't be free and stuff like that. So I think there's, there's great stuff on, on, um, on YouTube and that's, that's what yeah, I use. That's very true. You know, I, I, I can't true. be bothered, bothered like going into text and digging and, and things like that. Also there, there are a lot of opinions. Yeah. yeah just uh, and i can have it in the background if it's a kind of whatever procedure install like a complicated installer or something like that although usually i get my own support for for, for stuff like that so um um yeah i ju i use youtube all the time that's my main kind of con um, sort of platform for consuming music and basically text because a lot 90 percent of the time i have the phone in my pocket or somewhere and i'm doing something else and there's you know something in the background yeah um, i suppose that were i think the thing is is i mean these resources i suppose we we, we sort of almost become we take them for granted to a degree. I mean, obviously, YouTube's owned by mm -hmm. Google. I mean, Twitter's obviously now owned by Elon Musk, which which makes it a lot harder to uh, to have a sort of uh, connection with because it's, there's been so many things that have changed. It's no longer the same thing as it was, and it's also become I mean, a, a lot harder to communicate on because there's so many loonies. But I mean, yeah, I have to, I have to say that I have so many so much criticism on YouTube. It's all not it's not all uh, kind of hunky dory at all because they keep showing me the same content and they keep showing me stuff that i watched already and it's like they're trying to to make me click on the stuff that they want me to click on by showing it to me like every time and it's really i i don't like uh, i even tried to um obviously i i looked for a video explaining how to uh, and I watched a few on YouTube and some of them said to to delete your history and I did that many like 10 years or however long of, of history and it didn't really change much because it kind of learned my preferences 
instantly and then sure. it keeps showing you the same the well, same I suppose, video yeah, that's that's the that's the nature of algorithmic stuff i mean this is the I, I suppose in a wider discussion this is the danger we're getting into i was having a chat with uh, occasionally in bath we meet up with a sort of a bunch of freelancers uh, uh, and whatnot and i had a chat with them last week and we were talking about the whole kind of chat gpt hysteria and ai and one of the things one of the uh, theories that was posited was actually it's going to get to the point where you know, AI will, you could say, I want to watch or I want to listen to a program about this and AI will make it for you and it will be adequate. You know, it would be, it will be like the, mm -hmm. the lift music of your personal choice of entertainment. But then you will end up with this kind of uh, almost like a, a, a creative, um, uh, what's the word, a ghetto, where, you know, you pay extra for stuff that's mm -hmm. actually made by humans. So, you know, we end up in these situations where we only get what we can afford to pay for, which... I think would be very, very sad uh, overall because, I mean, the internet has built on this spirit of collaboration and sharing of information. I mean, Sonic's much the same thing. I mean, yeah, we're a Not business anymore. and we try and make money. Sure. We try and make money out of our business and there are complicated moral and business and ethical issues that we all have to struggle with every day, but we try and make a path that doesn't seem too crass or doesn't try and take advantage too much. You know, it, it, it's difficult. And I guess if you scale it up yeah. to something the size of Reddit or whatever, these things which, I mean, let's face it, something like... Twitter, I mean, it's $44 billion in the hole, so it's got to do something pretty radical. And I don't know where, <laughs> you know, what, what, what's going on with others. But these are the sort of things, this is what happens when, you, when, it, when it gets scaled and it, things start to get yes. sketchy, you know. I mean, I suppose that's the thing. I, I, I don't know if it's a particularly music tech issue, but it's going to be. I mean, because we all get our information from places that are generally have some kind of preferential kind of content put, put towards yes. us and so that every that there's, that there's always a sort of a motive or a, a backstory to why you're seeing this link or why you're seeing that story and you know whatever it may be anyway i didn't want to dwell yeah. too much on it but i just thought it was an interesting one should we talk about the uh, anikari because i think this is really fascinating so uh yes let me see if i can find that that is um what's that one yes so i think it's this isn't it I don't have a link for because it's only just come out. Uh, it's physics based synthesis. This is by uh, a chap. Hey there, uh, I'm Evan, and I'm going to show you around this instrument. Well, there he is. Anukari is a physics based software synthesizer and effects processor, which works as a standalone instrument or as a plug in. Oh, he's got a dreamy reverb workstation. on his voice. Uh, this guy was a, 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 um, a Google engineer for 10 years. It so, the uh, principle of Newtonian physics. But what does that mean? Fortunately, Kari, since the uh, ball and springs are virtual, let's just two stationary try and get some sound with rubber bands or springs. It's quite a long video. There was one with loads of balls, like oh, loads go. of them. So you have mics, you have spring tension, you have mass, uh, and you can sort of hit them. You have a damping, and then it gets onto these kind of real complexes where he's playing audio through them, so they're all res... And essentially, it sounds like a cheap spring reverb, spring reverb to me, but I didn't want to kind of go there that early. But I think I think th that wasn't so interesting, but the Newtonian physics, and it's, it's, I thought it was a really fascinating thing, and it's I think it's literally just come out, so we didn't have time to do a story about it. Um, this looks really... I'm going to come to you first, yeah, because I'd imagine this is right up your street, isn't it? This sort of, like completely different approach to sound generation it's quite an interesting idea yeah I, I mean it reminds me very much of the hacken um, um engine ah, uh, okay. the like engine. physical modeling right the physical modeling link uh, there also you have the gravity and you have the kind of uh, the distance and the resistance and all those physical elements which you can uh, build your your model uh, on, and then it kind of has its physical behavior, which which is very very believable. Even here with those sine waves, there's something kind of that that sounds organic because it mimics the the physical behavior, and and that yeah. you know that's great. Uh, yeah, there's um, a lot of comb filtering and uh, which is a lot of the harmonic manipulation of the whole thing is based on on comb filters which are basically yeah. delays with different degrees of, of uh, resonance and uh, feedbacks and uh, distance between the, the different taps uh, 
it's a very visual way of uh, if you can tweak those arrows and the kind of amount of uh, excitation and all that uh, it's a very high level way of um, kind of creating quite complex uh, behavior which otherwise you would have to dial in a million envelopes and and things like that mm. so in that sense mm. it's ah, I see what you mean I can imagine it's probably Sorry. quite sensitive. If you get the velocity right, you could get some really beautiful dynamic Absolutely. stuff going on in there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you get that thing with the, I don't know if you can see it with the head. Yeah, the I can, ju we can just about see that. The, 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 eager, uh, the eager matrix, it just that. And it's, and it, um, when it kind of, when it's integrated with, yeah. the and calibrated for certain hardware it can be very expressive and very um again it's a tool of inspiration when i need some vibe or something like that i get whatever uh, and i just do stuff in the background with loads of delays and stuff and and it's just a different way of of expression and it doesn't sound like any like a cs80 with a ribbon or anything like that it just there's something sure. kind of very convincingly acoustic about that because of the the physical mm. emulation of uh, behavior yeah it's an interesting one robin i mean you 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 mentioned this as mm. well because you must have got the same email which is saying i'm releasing this tomorrow and he's uh, it's still kickstart it, well not kickstart it's still early days but this is a proof of concept i mean it's a lot of work gone into it. i mean it does mm. it does look a little bit like a uh, 3d modeling program from a pc from about 1992 <laughs> at the moment but i'm sure all <laughs> yeah, that stuff does. can be fixed yeah it's a bit clangy I'd have to say in the demo, it's you know, <laughs> you're not looking at a at a whole load of, of of variety perhaps. But I think what what I like about it, I mean, in most physical modeling software, you're just dealing with a bunch of parameters and you're changing the size of yeah. a block or a rattle or something, and that's that's interesting. But in this, I, I like the fact that you can change the the direction you're pulling the thing, and it's that 3D yes. space interaction that really makes it kind of different and you you know you can have something that's really loose wanging itself over here while something very tight <laughs> over, over here are we talking about music technology <laughs> and you know and those sorts of things all come together and, and interact i think is where the interest lies the, the problem becomes is that you can have a apparently he's he gets like 750 of these things going at once on a on a average pc because it takes a little bit of number crunching um but would you need to individually, you know, set well, the tension note. on each of those Ooh. springs? You know, you know, there has to be some kind of macro uh, idea going on, perhaps. But I think it's, as you say, it's an early prototype. It's there's lots more to come, like Boeing and blowing and uh, other interesting things. <laughs> or oh, you at the back? Yes. Stop! Stop! Boeing. Stop! Boeing. <laughs> Boeing. So sorry. I would have is, thought, is I mean, wang, this is... The, is Wang Yourself Over Here the name of the episode? Well, it's either that, <laughs> actually, uh, well, I, I, it's a bit clangy, or Moog Timberwolf, I think, might just edge a it bit, at the moment. I Moog think. Timberwolf is great. So I like this, really like this. Obviously, I've got a number of physical modelling since, but mine, mine are kind of 90s vintage and don't have anywhere near the amount of kind of resonators or... Um, physical um, objects interacting with one another. Um, so I think like the audio, the audio effect potential will be something that excites me. Because one of my favorite things to do is run some audio through guitar rigs spring reverb. You know, Native Instruments right. guitar rig. Oh, yeah. It's got a spring, yeah. but there's a hidden parameter where you can change the spring length which you'd never be able to do in real life. You couldn't, you know, have a, a variable length spring. Um, and it, and if you can modulate that with like a sample and hold LFO, you get a really cool clangy, you know, textures. So I'd be looking at, at doing that kind of thing with it. Maybe seeing if you can um, change the tension of the objects with some kind of rhythmic LFO. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, like I say, I, 
he says it's early it's early proof of concept right? i think he actually yes. went on to say let me see if i can find it i said uh uh it's a physics-based software synthesizer where the user can create arbitrary 3d networks of massive springs and other components and play it with a midi keyboard or use it as an effect processor i think yes. it's substantially novel i haven't seen anything like it at all save for a few academic papers that were never turned into products so i mean sure. i think that's I don't know. What, I, I guess it would have to be a software. I, I love the idea of this being some kind of children's toy that you can actually make things mm. out of. So you can create oh, cool. a basic like structure connects. and then that somehow... Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I don't know if that's ever likely to be. Uh, yeah, but I think you, your, um, your USB device is starting to do the robot thing. You might just need to plug it and unplug it quickly before I come back to you if you had anything else to say. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'll just wait for that. I think it probably just needs to be reset. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, cool. I'm glad Very that there's cool. some innovation. I, I, I wonder if there's going to be some stuff going on in this it, uh, that will happen in the future with this. I mean, it's always great to see Google engineers coming out from the dark side and doing creative things. I mean, I'm sure, I wonder if these are those, what are they projects? They, they, they used to have this kind of, they could do a day a month or whatever it was, or half a day a week, or I can't remember what it was, on, on you know, their kind of... Uh, Google time. Their, their put, Google time, yeah. I wonder if this is sort of came came out of that somehow, or whether this happened uh, subsequently after that. But it does look like a good thing. Wish, yeah. wish uh, um, Evan all the best with it. And it's good to see some innovation. Mm. Absolutely. Whether it's sure. uh, going to go in, I guess it's going to go into uh, plug it. Are you back, Yo? Do you manage to? Uh, yes, I uh, think. You I tell can. me. I can see myself. I think so. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It was it was that that thing that USB occasionally just loses its clock or it's something. It's the and GoPro, a bit weird. probably. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Well, um, I suppose we are kind of at the end of this. I'm going to save a little bit of, uh, of, of topics for next week because goodness knows that sure. <laughs> we're going to need them in the summer. I should actually say we've got a guest, um, Florian from Audio Pills is going to come on uh, next week. Um, Mr. Bad Gear himself. Uh, I did a little cool. interview with him uh, at Superbooth and while I was there I asked him if he'd come on. He was great fun to talk to. So should be, who knows what will happen. I mean, uh, he's when he's on camera, he's very on as we've seen with his stuff. But a lot of his things uh, yeah. uh, have been scripted that I've seen so we'll see how he is in, in free form unless he's, he's going to send been, me a script um, of things I can say. <laughs> he's been so encouraging actually. Him, Alex Ball, Espen. They've all been, you know, for me getting my videos out there and everything. Yeah. In, in other areas of life you might expect people to be competing with one another, you know, but with YouTube it seems everybody's mm. just happy for one another to be, um, you know, Involved. That's because they're and not making any money. <laughs> well, I guess so. I guess it's more kind of a creative. But I think it's because people will watch hours of YouTube videos. So it's not a yes. zero sum game. People will watch it's... absolute hours mm. of it. So we have. Right. And we, Robin, I, of course, noticed, has been. Uh, yeah, I've, very, I've noticed that nice. uh, <laughs> uh, Divkin has been post has been commenting on a, on a bunch of our Superbooth videos. I mean, we shot so many of them, and sort of occasionally, he sort of he'll pop up and do a one or so. He's obviously working way through ours. I mean, I think we worked out in the first week it was some ludicrous. So, if, in the first week, if you added yeah. all the all the hours watched up, it would it would equal. Um, you know, 10 years or something of somebody's time wow. if they were all added end to end rather than run concurrently. It's bonkers, isn't it? That what people, what the it kind is. of rubbish that people will watch. <laughs> 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 Not saying that yours is rubbish at all. A niche, no. I think. We're, we're as niche. a niche and your stuff, as, as Robin, yours is also great. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to. Uh, well, to thank you very that. much. I was talking <laughs> I about my own that. output, really. Digging my own rambling hole. nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, la, 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 la. Yeah, okay. So, folks, um, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks everybody in the chat here i'm sorry we didn't get around to any questions this week i mean hopefully we've sort of answered some of them uh but i'll i'll, I'll uh, flag them up and uh, hopefully we'll get to have a few more of them and of course we'll i'll put the show preview next up the, the next show will be up on youtube probably later on today and you can leave any questions there as well for florian um and we can probably ask him a few questions so we'll try and introduce some of that sort of stuff but folks so um paulie you're you're uh, yes. got any more videos planned i mean i guess they take a long time they do look very very well uh, executed sure. so i don't know you got i'm any gonna do the, the i'm gonna do a couple i mean i've got enough gear haven't i so i do i uh i think i might do something for sonic state next though do another like Ooh, five, five minutes. minutes yeah and distract everyone with my nails you know and that'll be uh, that'll be great it'll be a, a great hit again i imagine but yeah i'll do that next and then yes it's my live gig which is coming up uh at the 
beginning of July. So, so oh, that'll God, be good. what's the dates? Can you give us? A, can you plug that for us? What's the? Uh... It's ju- it's July the first. It's actually a sellout show, so no one could buy tickets if they wanted to anyway. But it's nice I've been able to turn up somewhere and play to a a sold out audience. It doesn't happen very often. Wow! Yeah, but, that's but that's computer a great geeks thing. will will turn up for we'll travel for old computers <laughs> they don't even care about me it's playing they're here to see the old computers basically right excellent so well that's good <laughs> i will have glad to hear that paul and of course uh, you can check out paulie's um view- videos on the uh, youtube video there magical synth adventure if you search magical for that, got... synth adventure do yeah. Yeah, that has got a thing on the end. <laughs> and Robin, of course, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us too. It's always a pleasure. You're I welcome. hope uh, it's not too hot in your... Uh, I noticed there was, a, there was a cockerel or a chicken <laughs> sort of was strutting about the place. Was there a bloody cockerel? I, can, I heard one. Yeah, nice. Nice to have a bit of yeah, that. So no, that you're, you're probably getting a bit of a constant where you background. Are. Is it? Yes, definitely. Definitely. It'd be great into thank some you. granular you reverb. Good. You can figure that. So what's next for you then? What's, uh, what's your next video publishing uh, highlight? Uh, next thing I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do something really fascinating on one U Eurorack. It's going to be Ooh. in depth and exciting. I've just had the Pulp Logic um, front panel turn up to my one U Molten Motion Meter, in case you haven't heard of such yes. a thing. And so it's I prompted have. me to do a, an IntelliJ Pulp Logic face off and to really get to grips with what that's all about. So that's exciting. And I've also got a gig, but it's playing at the Village Fate on a week on Saturday, playing rock and Sweet. roll and noisy indie hits with me and some mates. Okay. So that's fun. Amazing. Nice. That sounds like great. Great. I, I, that's that's really good. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Robin. And, of course, Mr. <laughs> Gerard Nevo, who's probably going to alt-tab his way back into some massive uh, session that he's uh, got oh, a deadline for four o'clock. <laughs> he's already there. Uh, nice to see you, Gerard. I'm guessing uh, mixes and, and sampling tweaking, or you uh, got other stuff going and, on? Uh, as well? Yeah, I'm working on some product development as well, but not something that I can share at the moment so uh, okay at some point well, in I, the future I, I do, very exciting I, I, did I, very exciting did days. i did i get it right that you're not you're you're available for freelance product development is that part of your uh, is that something that um, you're doing yeah or? i you know i've worked for waves for for many many years did over 100 uh, products um and yeah i'm now um, sort of independent and uh it's just overwhelming the the possibilities and things that going that are going on uh, so i'm trying to to find my way through all that while doing because i'm always you know wearing the the two hats one the the kind of audio technology and one is the pro- mixer producer musician um so i'm trying to keep that balance uh in place which has been quite erratic uh <laughs> in terms of the dynamics of of everything but uh yeah all good all really exciting stuff excellent well thank you everybody for joining us thanks to all of the folks in the chats and the irc and thanks to wagyu again for moderating and greasing the wheels of the technology behind <laughs> our show uh, to keep it uh, to keep it running all smoothly and uh, thanks to obviously to both of our sponsors isotope and baby audio do check out their products and uh, don't forget to to check out the uh, the offers uh, which will be in the show notes and in the in the show itself but that is it now for sonic talk uh, seven no oh, 760 yes goodness me wow how time flies see you all again soon thanks very much for watching take care now bye-bye bye Bye. see ya Bye. bye